if I could change anything in my journey to becoming a health and fitness coach, what would it be? I've already made the mistakes, so you don't have to. William Grazione, owner of The Educated Dieter, your health and fat loss strategist. In today's video, I'm going to answer the question, if you could change some of the first steps you made in your journey as a health and fitness coach, what would they be? And in this video, I'm going to provide you the top seven things that I would give this advice to a new coach that wants to get started. The very first thing is that you have to be grateful for all experiences. I think there are a lot of people that are trying to avoid failure, but failure is inevitable if you're trying something for the first time. You're going to fail. You're going to feel like you don't have the knowledge. You're going to feel like you don't have the tools, the experience, and all of the same things that I felt back in 2010. However, I'm here today to tell you that failure is going to be a significantly impactful part of that process. If it wasn't for my failures, I would have never developed the knowledge, the education, and the awareness that I have now to help women the way that I help women in our coaching practice, the educated dieter. So the second thing that I will say is I want you guys to go out, hire a mentor, find a mentor, but you also have to be mindful that in many cases, in order to find a good mentor, you need to be somebody that that mentor wants to help. Think about that for a second. Am I the person that a mentor would want to help? See, when I reach out to people or you know, when people reach out to me for mentorship, I have to ask myself, is this person somebody that I actually want to mentor? Because truthfully, if I'm going to be investing my time, energy into you, I need to make sure that you're somebody that I align with on a perspective of what are your goals, like spirituality, what do you believe in, you know, who are you, who do you want to help, and all those things that are correlated to who you want to be in the health and fitness industry. Now, full transparency, I got started back in 2009, 2010, after I graduated from college with my bachelor's degree in nutrition and exercise science. The very first mentor that I had was a gentleman that I'm sure many of you know of. His name is Dr. Lane Norton. Now, Dr. Lane Norton was a student or a client of Dr. Joe Klemzuski. Now, back then in 2010, those two gentlemen were the only gentlemen that were putting out evidence-based information on the internet that I was able to find and start to read all the articles, watch the videos, and learn from them both. Now, there's only two coaches that I've hired in my 14 years of being a coach. One of them was Dr. Lane. The other one was Alberto Nunez. Now, Lane happens to be a really good friend of mine now. We've been friends now for over 14 years. When I met him at the NGA Pro American, he was competing in the professional show. I think he placed third or fourth out of 20-something bodybuilders, which was a great showing. And then I won the NGA Pro Americans. Uh, as a, I won the NGA Amateur American, which basically made me a professional, but this was back in 2010. And so I built a really good relationship with, with Lane, and he served as my very first mentor. And truthfully, back then, there was nobody that believed in what I wanted to do. So maybe you're a, an online coach or an aspiring online coach, or maybe a personal trainer and somebody wants to build a business online. My best tip of advice is to find somebody that's already done it. Now, everybody thought I had a pipe dream back in 2010, but I just needed to find one person that had already done what I was trying to do, had accomplished my goal, my dream, and was living the life that I wanted to live. And ultimately, once I found that person, God aligned that person, put that person in my life, I knew in that moment that it was possible. So my first tip is don't avoid the failure and be grateful for every experience. My second tip is to find a mentor, somebody that you know, like, and trust, but that you can also show up in their circle and be somebody that they want to help. And the third thing is understanding that inside of nutrition coaching, and what I'm talking about is the X's and the O's. It's the check-in process. It's the evaluation of the images. It's the client communication. There's going to be a lot of things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis as you're getting your client check-ins, you're going Monday through Friday, answering clients, how you're going to communicate with them. Do you want to talk to them? Do you want to do Zoom calls? Do you want to do Loom recordings? Are you just going to respond via email? Are you just going to send audio messages? There are a lot of different things you're going to deal with on a weekly basis as a coach. What you need to be okay with is failing through everything. 
to ultimately learn what is best for your clients. And one of the best ways to find out what's best for your clients is to actually schedule time to talk to them. Because as a coach, we are in the business of humans. We are in the business of helping people. So what you need to do is schedule some time to talk to your clients and say, hey, what do you think would be best? What do you think would be the best way for me to coach you? Right? Are you somebody who is going to make sure you send your check-in in every single week like clockwork and I'm just going to respond back to you here on my computer with an email? Are you going to be somebody that wants an audio message sent to you? Are you going to be somebody that wants a Zoom recording or a Loom recording? Or are you going to want to speak to me every month or every couple of weeks? Whatever it is, you need to make sure that you can stay in really good communication with that client and again, learn through your failures. Now, learning through your failures also means you're going to make a bad nutrition adjustment. You're going to make a bad cardio adjustment. You may even create a bad training program. You may even push a client way too hard when they're already hormonally imbalanced and you had no idea, you know. All these things are going to happen, but you have to go through those trials in order to gain the experience that's going to make you a pioneer in your space later on down the road. So the third thing I would say is you cannot avoid in the trenches coaching mistakes because the in the trenches coaching mistakes make your experience later on down the road and your experience will be priceless. And tip number four is to question everything, okay? Now, I happen to be a very inquisitive person, but I notice that there are a lot of nutrition coaches that are just taking the information that they're receiving right now as face value and they're not questioning it because their favorite influencer said it or because their favorite evidence-based coach said it. They just take it for face value and think that that is the holy grail. That's the Bible. However, I will tell you that in my experience, I've tried to question everything. And by me questioning everything, that led me down the path of becoming a very good female-focused health coach. If we rewind the clock all the way back to 2015, 2016, in the space, we had a lot of women that were dieting for bodybuilding contest preparation shows or photo shoots or trying to get very lean. And a lot of them developed stress-related issues where maybe their gastrointestinal tract slowed down, bowel movements slowed down, they lost their periods, uh, they had really extreme bloating after the fat loss phases were over with, had really extreme bloating during the fat loss phase, they had really bad rebounds after the shows or the fat loss phases were over. And so I questioned it. And I went to my advisors and I'm like, hey, advisor, like, what do you think? What's going on here? And I didn't really get the answers that I thought I would get, which would be a, another inquisitive response. It's like, well, if you think there's a problem, like, go find the answer. Uh, and so that's what I essentially needed to do. So I started to read more books. I started to look more into the literature regarding relative energy deficiency in sports, specifically for the female athlete. And I happened to find a lot of really cool information. But had I just accepted information for being what it was, I never would have taken that leap forward forward to being more of a female health focused coach. Now I'm in a position where I firmly understand all the intricacies of the perimenopausal transition and how to properly diet women, how to recover their hormonal profiles after bodybuilding shows and fat loss phases, and also just how to optimize the internal health of really a man or a woman. So by me having these this many questions and me always being very inquisitive, I've been able to put myself in a position where there's really not a lot of health related issues that I can't fix. So tip number four is to always question everything and not just take what your favorite influencer says as face value. Now let's go ahead and let's dive into the foundations of your business because hopefully in the first you know four tips I gave you, you've learned something. Um, in the fifth one, though, I will say learning business systems will probably be one of the most important things that you need to learn as a business owner. So what I mean by that is if you want to operate your business for real, you want to make your business legitimate, what you need to do is learn how to separate your personal stuff from your business stuff, make sure you're tracking all of your profits and losses on both sides, paying yourself properly, tracking all the profits and losses in your business, building a really solid foundation for that company to be able to grow, thrive, and develop as the company grows. So if I could go back in time, the most important thing I would say is I would have tried to learn more about the business systems first. I would have 
seeked out and hired the people, you know, a little bit sooner. I probably would have hired a better, you know, a financial advisor. I would have hired a CPA that could just teach me more things. I would have asked the CPA, the financial advisor, I would have asked those people to teach me what I need to know to build a really solid foundation for the company to be able to track all the data that I needed to track in order to grow the business the way that I want to grow the business now. So just keep in mind that when you're trying to grow a business, you have to know your numbers. I cannot reiterate that enough. You have to know your numbers. Before I learned this, I used to think that business was a gamble. But now that I know my numbers so well, business is not a gamble. It's very intelligent. It's very meticulously planned out. And you can actually plan on and strategize how to grow your business over the course of time as long as you know your numbers. So tip number five, I would say, is to get yourself around the right people. Seek out the CPAs, the financial advisors, the people that can help you take money and, you know, put it into savings accounts, and start to build wealth for yourself. And tip number six is to not stay locked in your bedroom or your townhouse or your apartment answering emails all day and avoiding people. <laughs> I made that mistake throughout my coaching career a lot. Um, I think when you're answering emails for 15 to 16 hours per day, it's pretty easy to just stay inside your house. You end up building a home gym, you work out of your maybe your home office, your bedroom, whatever it is, and you're really not getting around people. One of the best tips of advice that I would say is to get yourself involved in a network of people. I'm involved now in an organization called BNI, and every week, me and 25 other entrepreneurs that work here inside of Foreign Co., which is a co-working space where I lease space here in Lando Lakes, we meet every single day. And all the amazing professionals that I have in this group, I wish I had them five years ago, 10 years ago, because that really truly would have fast tracked the way that our business grew and developed over time. I'm also extremely grateful for all of the relationships that I have inside of that group, because truthfully, here inside of Foreign Co., if I need somebody, I can go find that profession in this building. So tip number six is to get around busy working professionals that specialize in the thing that you need help with in your business. And they, in most cases, will openly share that information with you over and over again, putting you in a great position to see everybody around you win. And tip number seven, which is definitely not least, uh, I would not have taken a break from YouTube. I'm here on YouTube today because I reached out to George. George is the man behind the camera. He's been doing a phenomenal job for us. And truthfully, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have taken so many breaks from YouTube. I would have been consistent. I would have uploaded at least a video every week. I would have never taken a break over the last 10 years. Uh, but here I am today coming back on YouTube to create valuable content for you guys here because I, I know that there's so many people out there that need this information, knowledge, and education to essentially help them get to where they want to go, both with their health and fitness goals as well as maybe learning from some of the mistakes that I've already made. The reality is when you're doing something like this for 14 or 15 years, you have gone through so much stuff that you have something that is invaluable, which is experience. So going back, reflecting back, Probably the biggest thing that I would say is I wouldn't have taken a break from some of the social media platforms and I would have kept mass producing content on YouTube. So that's it. My top seven things. What have I learned, you know, being a coach for the last 14 years? And then also, what are some things that I would change in my journey to becoming the coach that I am today? I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless. And if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comment section down below. And we'll see you in the next video.